What up, everybody? Welcome back. Yes, I know it's been a while. And because it's been a while, it almost made me think of Superman 2 when he put the flag back on the White House and he said, sorry, I've been gone, Mr. President. It'll never happen again. You remember that? I was like, sorry, guys, we've been out for a while. Brian was on vacation. I was busy doing some other stuff that needed to get done and we are back. And I want to thank all of you guys who have stuck with us and have listened to our show and have commented. Uh, shout outs to you, May, and, 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 Fre and Freddie. Um, any shout outs you want to give out to Brian before we begin? Uh, I'll save it for in the context of the show. I think I've been doing a little, uh, I got a little small sample, like market research on some of the stuff we like to talk about. I was on vacation, but there was a, a lot of content consumed by the younger generation. And I kind of paid attention to what was working for them that, Come. you know, you and I don't always see the same way. So I have yeah, some yeah. interesting stuff on that. We'll talk about it. Yeah. All right, cool. Today we got an interesting topic. There's a lot of things to talk about, but we're going to start off with this because I think this is the result of the retreat. What we're about to hear at the next San Diego Comic Con, the greatest Comic Con that it will that will ever be, because what it's been two years now. And Marvel wasn't even trying to come to these Comic Cons anymore. And now they're back. And Kevin Feige is going to give us a clearer picture as to what is happening. Brian, I, I'm sure you would agree that Secret Wars is certainly on the agenda. And that's where we're heading. That's what this whole multiverse thing is uh, uh, leading towards. Um, but it, it 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 won't be done in the next few years. I think this this is this is a very complex uh, event, and I don't think Marvel has done an initial. I mean, it started off great with Loki, but as you said before, this phase this uh, we're in phase four, correct? Phase four. This hasn't been. Marvel's best work um, in, in terms of consistency. Um, certainly there has been films that uh, you, Brian, have liked, Shang-Chi, uh, I'm sort of uh, on the fence with. Um, they've had some success with WandaVision. There's, there's a lot of stuff that they've been doing. Some have been hit and misses. And Brian, you said it before, you want them to experiment, and that's what they've been doing. But Brian, they are back at San Diego Comic Con. What do you think we're gonna hear? I know we're gonna probably hear some X Men news. I, I hope we hear some Fantastic Four news. But well, where do you think? What else are we we're looking forward to hearing from Kevin Feige from this retreat? What do you think is next? Yeah, so I want to give our official predictions. So I think we can rapid fire a lot of the things that are on the table, but. Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> I think you said it, right? It's, you know, playtime's over. Right? That's basically what this means for them to come back to Hall H. They haven't been to Hall H um, since, I believe, 2018. Because um, Comic-Con itself, as you said, stripped down and really not held in, in normal fashion the last two years. But remember, in 19, Endgame came out in May. And so that was done prior to Comic-Con and they kind of took, you know, they had Far From Home already in the can. So there wasn't really a lot for them to promote. So this is really a big deal. They haven't really been here since 2018, to my knowledge. And they've been mm -hmm. shifting more of the focus to D23 and some of the Disney specific events. So this tells you that, you know, they want to not just, they want it to be as broad a scope as possible to tell you what they have to tell you. So. Clearly, it's a phase five is this is going to be the backbone of this, right? That's the, the classic and in a classic Marvel fashion, right? They'll, I'm sure there'll be the the black screen. They throw up the logos with the titles and kind of the basic timeline. That will probably be a centerpiece of what you get. But I think a lot of it, too, will be clarification. I think I'm expecting Kevin to spend some time saying, 
something along the lines of, we've given you all this content over the past couple of years. Here is what is kind of being carried forward through the universe. And he, and then he won't really mention, and like stuff that's not mentioned, I think you can infer is probably like a one and done or like more self-contained. So I think that's a lot of what I'm looking for is like, what among the series, what strands among the films that we've gotten are going to be hinted and framed as critical elements to the plan that I think, as you said, you and I agree, the end game equivalent of phase five is Secret Wars, the movie that I think we agree will be the, the last piece, last stop on the train. So that's, I think, the centerpiece. I'm going to put it back to you because I'm going to give you a couple of big ones. You already mentioned a few. So let's talk about Fantastic Four. What exactly do you think they could... So at this time last year, they would have said, we got John Watts already in hand as the director. And I would have thought they probably would have been ready, certainly for like a casting announcement, something. <clears throat> but with Watts leaving, and no official director, what what do you think is a reasonable, like clearly Fantastic Four is going to be part of this presentation. What do you think is reasonable for them to unveil that would get people excited? Do you, is it possible they have director and cast already ready? I think With because... No hints. Nobody, like, uh, there was one IMDB random drop, but, like, there's been no rumors of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope that it is the case that they will reveal something because it will be a uh, salute to them for keeping it quiet, right? Uh, and no leaks. Or, or I mean, or obviously there's been rumors and stuff like that um, and people wanting Kaziski and, and most recently it seems to be that Kev Kevin Foggy did fan service. Everybody wanted to see this. Here you go. Okay, now it's over. Yep. Right? Because Brian, just thinking back to how this all began, this was all new to us, right? And I think they're trying to get back to that um, with big revelations, um, introducing uh, the casts for the for these films, like they did with Chadwick. Even though you know a lot of people were speculating that it would be him. But it was a surprise to when it was when it was confirmation, right? Stuff like that, showmanship, Brian. I think that's a lot to do with this. Yeah, because you're exactly right. I mean, when you think about a hall, like the difference between Hall H and D twenty three is like the value of Hall H is you've got a full theater of live fans, and you you play the stage right it's like so it's like you you wait and then there's some it's almost like wrestling right the music the entrance <laughs> music hits right and then who is this coming in like so you can't squander those opportunities and that's why i ask you the question it's like you know i think back to like they you know they, like when they bring Mahershala ali out to be blade with fantastic four it's like you can't just walk reed richards out there you can't just walk the director out there like if you're gonna if you're gonna use this as like we want to launch fantastic four our way I think you need all of them. You need a director and all four, and maybe you even need Doom if he's going to be in the movie. You might need all six on stage at the same time, and then people are like, <clears throat> for that time that like they all got like kind of like when the Avengers first popped up on stage, you know, way back mm. when in 2010, I guess it was. But yeah, so I, that's where I'm just like, that seems like an awful lot. Um, but at the same time, as we know in Phase Four, like that logo was the tease of the finale of phase four was this fantastic four film so i have to think there's something major with that movie that we're going to be told i hope so i hope so and, and to your point recent news um with dr strange 2 coming to disney plus you know michael walder has been out kind of making the rounds uh and he confirmed the thing about krasinski he confirmed that was a kevin feige wanted to do this to acknowledge the fans and make Krasinski read Richards. And everything about the quote, you can go look it up, would indicate to me and to us, 
that this was a one and done acknowledgement of what fans have been talking about, but we we do not intend to move forward with him in yeah. the world. We want someone else. Do you believe Kevin is trying to go back to what worked in the beginning in casting individuals that are not so well known, but when they're looking at their auditions and they're like, this guy's, this guy's Reed Richards, like, I guess the same way he feels about Kam um, Kamala Khan. Uh, what's the girl's name? Iman Balani. Awesome. Yes, yes. We got to talk about that. Um, do you think that's where, the, that's, this is where, what he's trying to do? Well, I think the luxury you have between Fantastic Four and Doom is I think you have five roles. So not all of them need to be A-listers. I think that's an advantage, right? So you have the luxury of taking the best audition or the best portrayal or the biggest swing with any one of those characters because you know that another of the characters you could always anchor with a bigger name. Uh, and so... You know, I do you think I to, do, do you think Doom is not going to be an A lister? I think Doom is the most likely to yeah. be the highest. Pro I think you're if you wanted to do it, you you lead with like like think about it as as an analogy like 1989 Batman. They get Jack Nicholson to do the Joker, and Michael Keaton's not Mike. He's not a huge huge name yet. He gets Batman and like he gets cast in like '87, right? So that's where it's like. We're going to lean on Jack because everyone knows him and he's won Oscars. And then we're going to pick the guy we really want to be Batman and Bruce Wayne. And so I think you can do that here. You can make Doom the, the lead effectively. And then you can cast, maybe it's a little younger Fantastic Four. Like maybe it's a Fantastic Four where again, where you're like, hey, I want these same people to grow together as a family for 10 years and not have them all be people that like, any person on the street is going to be like, I know that person from 10 other roles. Yeah. Um, I think we had a discussion that we would uh, want Henry Cavill to be, I mean, although I think it's a huge risk because Henry Cavill, to me, honestly, Brian, I've seen some of the things that he's done. He is not, it takes a special director to get a performance out of this guy. Um, they did it with Man From Uncle. He was, he was, uh, uh, amazing in that in that um, in that movie, but in other the stuff that I've seen, man, ooh, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, so we got that Fantastic Four. Anything else before we move on to what may oh. be announced? Yeah, that, I think it's gonna be light on X Men. Um, I think there's not going to be a lot of X-Men. And in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if there was an X-Men at all. It, maybe X-Men would be... No, but see, I think... Because I think if you, if you want to put people's anticipation on Secret Wars, I think having like X-Men as it's in there kind of almost takes away from that or like upstages that. And then if you have X-Men as like, hey... We're going to drop an intro X-Men film in the middle of phase five. That almost feels like it's a disservice to X-Men. I'm going no on major X-Men announcements. Me too. And we've spoken about this before, Brian, as to how important, not to say that Fantastic Four is not that important, but We've been anticipating that one for much, much longer, and they've announced it. But we've said, with regards to X-Men, yo, they can't mess this. Like, they really can't mess this up. You got to be really careful with how you cast the X-Men. What story are you going to tell? How are you going to introduce them into the mcu will it be from another you know what i'm saying is it the same we don't we don't know my favorite idea or theory brian 
Professor X has been wiping minds for years. Although unethical, he did what must ha must be done. He had to do it, right? So that 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 dynamic I would love to see on screen and how and how he um, justifies doing that um, every time there's an event. Okay, so no X Men. I think we both agree on. I, I I feel like I was hoping for, but you made a good point. Like if you announce the X Men, then people are not gonna just people are not gonna let go. I think so, that would that would yeah. trump Secret Wars. I think Secret Wars would be like the second billing to X Men. Yeah. yeah. Like, Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So here's my other. I, I I will say this. I do think you're gonna get clarity on. On the television side and a little bit on the movie side the willingness to do r-rated productions that's my other prediction so you think when they get announcements for stuff like Dare daredevil deadpool 3 being r-rated i think you will get clarity on their willingness to do that and what their intentions are with because look there's been a lot of smoke around the old defenders actors right they're popping up together in social media they're kind of like dropping hints oh i'd be you know like Kristen ritter i'd be more than happy to be jessica jones again like there's a lot of smoke here you know d'onofrio's tweeting pictures of him in the gym um wor working out and like i'm just sort of like all of these point to some kind of hey we're going to get er get everyone back together on stage we're going to talk about the plan for what are these in relation to the Netflix shows? What's the tone? And people are going to ask, like, is the, the moderator is going to have it canned in the Q&A? Is this going to be R-rated? Is this going to be TVMA? I think you will get that clarity. So my prediction is between Deadpool 3 and the old Netflix series, you will get clarity around Disney's willingness to do R-rated productions in the next phase. I think you can attribute that to Brian. Deadpool made Disney R-rated R. Because you, you yeah. had to. Yeah, you might thank Ryan Reynolds for that down the road. That may be his biggest contribution. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't say that. I'm not joking. I think that's, you know, he may have forced them to open the door for that. Of course. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's dollars. Um, dollars and lawyers. Um, I mean, again, with Kingpin, Daredevil is like, Kingpin didn't work for me in Hawkeye, as you know, and you didn't feel the same way. It just didn't work. Yeah. You can't soften these characters up. I'm sorry. You can, you can try, but why try when you can do it the right way and just leave it alone? Yeah. So. Although, I, as I said, I still don't quite understand how the Batman got a PG-13 rating, having now seen it several times on HBO Max in addition to several times in the theater. But I'm just saying, if you... If you intend to go short of the R rating, that's the template. Yeah. That's it. Go to that limit. <clears throat> that, that, that had all the biggest. Um, I did want to just rapid fire. What do you think we see in terms of footage for product projects we already know are coming? So I'll list a few. You can go any way you want with them. So we'll kind of forever. Most certainly. Ant Man three. Definitely. Um what was I gonna say? The Marvels. Um, yes. And then on the TV side, I think the big one I'd be wondering about is Secret Invasion. Are we close enough? They well, filmed yeah. they shot it. Are we gonna you know I would think if you're announcing Secret Wars, you'd wanna have foot real footage of Secret Invasion. So you think trailers, teasers for all of those as part of this presentation? I think there will be a presentation for the Marvels. I don't know if we're going to have a, we may have a teaser, but if not, we'll get some like sort of behind the scenes, some, you know, you know this is coming, whatever. I'm fine with that. But for stuff like, and we perhaps even Blade, maybe, I don't know. Oh yeah, about, forgot about Blade. Forgot about Blade. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Um, but for Quantum Mania, for certain, I feel like we're going to see something of a of a teaser trailer. Um, 
Wakanda forever. That might be with Thor, though. That, that that's the only thing. Like that, you we think, might you think that might be with with well, Thor? Yeah, I wonder if they dropped the trailer with Thor uh, or around that time. But I certainly think if they haven't, it's yeah. it's like the last chance they have. I think it comes out this first week in November. True, 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 it's true, true. Be August, right? So like they, true. yeah, they have. So to. we might get a teaser, and then for the for the Comic Con, get a, a full blown. Full, yeah. yeah, that could be. Um, what secret invasion? For me, Brian, Secret Invasion was a huge storyline. I would be a little bit bothered by the fact that they could start this in a series and finish it there and not end it with a big movie. I think if you wanted to trial that sort of... Uh, um journey from tv to film this would be it mm -hmm. so if it starts and finish on tv it better be dope it better be dope it has to be up there with loki because if it's not bro yeah i got you no i'm with you I'm gonna be super upset. Yeah. I gotta be surprised. I gotta be like, oh, I, I gotta be, oh, snap. And if it's not, if they decide not to end it there, that we're just gonna get from TV to the finale, which would be a movie. Again, this would be the sort of uh, storyline that you would try that with. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, I do have a little bit, I have a little more faith in this series just because I feel like the, the depth of the cast is so strong. Like it's like next level. Like if you, if you just look at who's on the casting sheet relative to the other series, this there's a lot of talent, right? So I kind of yeah. feel like they would not have signed on if there wasn't, they weren't pitched something pretty cool other than Sam Jackson is pretty cool. You get to work with him, but yeah. like I think, you know, yeah. I so saw. I, I think the expectations will be there. I think the budget will probably be bigger. Um, I am curious to see. Assuming Secret Wars is announced, do they have a director in hand? They don't necessarily do that always, but you know that that will be a, another surprise. If you had somebody big, you could certainly throw that throw that out there. I think you'll get confirmation to Shang Chi too. That'll be like in the in the phase five. I think that's the obvious one. Um, I think we know like Eternals is in limbo for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna see them again. But like Shang Chi Two is the one that I think you're you can reasonably expect that will probably be announced as with a title to give you some sense of what's what's coming. I hope we get into a conversation about Shang Chi, Brian, because I really like. I haven't seen it since the time I saw it in the movie theaters. Yeah, you and I are opposite. I've rewatched that. I find that movie so rewatchable. If I'm on a plane, I yeah. jump in like. Oh yeah, I jump in for like ten to fifteen minute segments. I've probably seen the movie in its entirety now, like five or six times. So, um, but you know, so I am curious: are they going to confirm Doc Strange three? I'm fascinated by this. We can talk about that at a later date, but I mean, I, got I wanted I, I I wanted to watch it again, Brian, but I said. Not ready in Disney Plus yet. You got other stuff to get through. But like, yeah, so that one, you know, that that's also out there. Uh, oh, I also forgot uh, Guardians 3 would be the other three. Ah, maybe, yes, yes, maybe yes, you yes, yes. Some footage, right? I expect something there. Of course. Definitely. I want to see what Adam Warlock is going to look like. Supposedly, he's going to have the gold hair, gold skin. So I'm really interested to see how that's going to look and how he will end up at the end of that film. So oh, just, please don't make him too silly. That's my only, my James Gunn fear, man. <laughs> don't make them too silly we'll see we'll see and then the other one we didn't talk about but i don't know what to make of it, is the nova nova prime was that that's that's a movie right that they've confirmed i yeah i saw that i i i didn't hear too much about it though is is it confirmed thought it was but like yeah i guess was, this would certainly be the form where you would see it on the timeline if they intended to do it so um but yeah, a lot. And that doesn't even none of that doesn't even talk about like the TV pipeline, which I'm assuming they're also 
See, that maybe they would save for D23. This could, remember, because they did a streaming, Disney did a streaming only day. So I'm actually going to bet that you don't get a lot of TV updates here other than maybe Secret Invasion or stuff that you already know is coming. Is coming yeah. I think this is going to be about movies and about Phase 5 and about the movies. That's my bet. This is a movie for them. I'll say, I'll say this, Brian. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing Nova. You know why? Guess. I don't, why would I, I don't know. I want to see Thanos destroy oh. Xandar. <laughs> okay. You, 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 that has to I'm be the opening yeah. sequence. Yeah, bring him that back. To, yeah. Um, anything else? Um, we think that they're going to be announcing other than uh, those uh, titles and shows? No, but I'm kind of with you. Like, I feel like in terms of the variety and the breadth of what they're going to bring, this is going to be about as heavy hitting as anything they've done in their in their history. And that includes, you know, the build up to to the Avengers films. Brian, the experience of being there and when those people are cheering, I would I would assume is an electrifying feeling. I will buy, I'll borrow the the. The same from the rock, an electrifying atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and it's been a while. And so I think this is uh the fact that they announced that we're gonna be there is really huge. And I think this is gonna be huge. You know what it also tells me too is that like we talked about this about like Marvel being in a quote unquote slump. I think I think it's a little bit of a validation of that. I think it kind of says that like. They had, you know, they're doing this experimentation, doing all the things we discussed, but I think it kind of says like they had a feel for what the tolerance was. And I think after Doc Strange 2, whether they would admit it or not, you know, the, the movie made money. But it was on balance a disappointment, I think, and they knew that. They could feel that from the fan base following Eternals, following this, some of the TV shows. I think it has something to do with that. I think it, I, I honestly wonder if all of these things, if these shows have been like off the hook across the board and Doc Strange 2 was like, had Pop Guns type of reviews and love and box office run. And that's, I don't know that they're coming to Hall H this year. I actually wonder, yeah. I actually wonder yeah. if like yeah. they would feel like, hey, we can experiment and, do, and play around a little bit more. But now they're like, nah, we can't, we can't let this slide. Yeah. Yeah, I did a little bit yeah. of that. They got to bring that. They got to bring that that hype back. Because yeah. right now there's no hype. I mean, we get hype for you know, we're hype for the movies that's gonna come out. But it's like I'm not gonna say each time they come out with, with something, we're like we're not that excited anymore. Yeah, not since No Way Home. We're definitely a level, a notch or two down from where we were in phase three. There's no question. And like, that's fair. Like you're building toward end game, but like, yeah, they, they can feel it. And I do think this is their like, all right, we need to bring people back to center, remind them of what we're good at and like lay out the thing that will get the train and the momentum just building for five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. You know, what's funny. Uh, shout outs to me. She said, she said when she came out of the movie theaters to see Dr. Strange too, she was confused as to what she said, was I supposed to like this movie? <laughs> Which goes back to something you said, Brian, in another show where you said, I think people are liking it, this movie just because, I don't know, I don't know if you said just because it's Marvel, but it's like, if this would have been a DC film, yeah. Would it be getting this much love, I, I guess? Yeah, yeah, no, I think the, yeah, certainly the reviews. I think the reviews would have been like on Rotten Tomatoes of what they were if this was a DC movie. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. When is Comic-Con again? I think it's in August. I think it's, it's usually like later in the summer. See, late July, I, late August, somewhere around there. I can't wait for the announcements. I can't wait. Um, so again, Marvel will be at Hall H at San Diego Comic Con. Um, and you would expect Brian 
to see their rival be there to sort of um, be on par in terms of the hype that Marvel will bring back to their uh, studio, to all to the MCU. And DC seems to be not on, not ready to deliver that sort of um, event, shall I say. Brian, your thoughts. That's that's, a, that's an understatement. Uh, if we're talking about this right now, yeah, look, I mean, Warner Brothers Discovery is going to be at Comic-Con. But other than some CWs, like so other some old... CWs, Harley Quinn. Goth Gotham Knights. Like there's some, you know, lesser... Stuff that you don't care about. Go ahead. Lesser property. <laughs> there is not a single DC film that has a panel. Which is like, stunning to me when you think about and you look at the calendar and you're like, wait a minute, like I got Black Adam in October, I got Shazam at Christmas, I got Aquaman 2, and oh yeah, that Flash movie that we probably don't want to admit exists is supposed to be next summer. You're not going to promote any of those at Hall H? Brian, I understand Flashpoint. Black yeah, that's a whole other topic. We'll talk about that. But yeah. But Black Adam? How is Black Adam? Well, what does the movie come out? October. So uh, okay, so I thought it was like it was gonna come out before Comic Con, but actually it'll be after Comic Con. And I don't understand. Two months after. Why? Why do you think they're not there, Brian? And does it concern you even more that this film will suck even more than you think it'll suck? You know, I don't know about that. Like I, I, I guess I, you know, I'm, I'm firmly entrenched. I think this movie will be like a Rotten Tomatoes fifty percent to fifty five. I think it'll be like a. I think it's fives across the board. Like fifty to fifty five percent Rotten Tomatoes. It's a five hundred dollar, five hundred million dollar movie, and we're kind of like shrug. That's nice. It's not horrible it's not epic and it just gets forgotten that's my firmly entrenched in that view yeah. um i think it says something about the new management uh and their approach to the line between the content they inherited and the content they want to build that's what it kind of signals to me is that they are still figuring out exactly what they want DC to look like. Um, you know, as I said, like Walter Hamada is still twisting as sort of the head of DC. I think there's no chance he's there 12 months from now. And I think it says like the stuff that they have in the can or in the pipeline, it, it either just isn't that big or it has problems like strange problems, right? Like Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial problems, like the star of Flashpoint might have major, major legal trouble problems, like things that you never want to deal with. And so as a result, I almost feel like they don't want to put the full marketing machine behind those because they haven't totally figured out what they're doing. With, yeah, yeah. with those yeah so i agree with you that black adam is the most conspicuous absence i would say shazam is number two. Oh wow i didn't even think about shazam but i was but i mean i kind of said they already ran up the white flag on shazam <laughs> when they up two, so maybe they're just like whatever but but listen i mean that was a well-reviewed movie and it did make 300 some million dollars i mean why not i mean if you think it's a better movie you know why, why not try to put something on so it is conspicuous. Like I said, I, th I have to think if it was old management, you'd have seen some panels. I think it's new management kind of saying like, we got to get through some of this content that we don't really love or we're not going to carry forward in a big time way. And like, when we're ready to give you our grand unveiling of the new DC and the new DC plan, then yeah, then you'll see us, whether it's at Fandom or whether it's at Hall H with a much bigger push. 
That's my best guess. You think they're heading towards a clean slate? I mean, obviously yeah, they are. Right? I do. Other than, well, other than the Batverse, right? I think they're gonna that one. They're gonna ride. Hell's yeah. But I think other than that, I don't think anybody's safe. I think everyone's playing for the like. I think they will honor the commitments, right? It's like Aquaman two will come out. It's shot. The movie's shot. It's gonna come out. Nice point. We'll talk about. It will appear somewhere in some form, yeah. someday. But yeah. you know, I think everything else is on the table. Everything else. I don't understand, Brian, and, and I I wondered about having this conversation or speaking about this individual and uh, I guess where we're, where we're going to end up with this film. I already said, take an L. Take an L. If you're not going to take an L, then recast. But we're too, too deep into this we're gonna do the whole thing over again. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, there's a lot of things to think about there. But I feel like I've said what I needed to say. And, and I think you, you've mentioned it before. I, you don't put out this movie. And I think we're headed toward that. But how, I, Brian, but where do we. Does something tragic have to happen in order for you to be immediately the next day? Wow. Be, you know, oh, this movie, Ezra Miller is no longer in this film. Do you wait for that? Or what are we waiting for? Well, do we want to have the whole Ezra Miller discussion right yes, now? Yes, there, yes, yes. Okay. The latest updates, again, these are, these are allegations, but, you know, he, you've got multiple families accusing Ezra Miller or obtaining restraining orders against him, um, claiming that he basically is, I mean, effectively grooming, kidnapping, warping, and stealing teenage and, un, you know, to minor age kids. And then you had a, I think it was Variety ran a feature talking about he, he is housing like a mother and her 12 year old child, like on a ranch in like rural Vermont against the will of the father. And like, and he, there apparently are multiple restraining orders out that it can't be served to them because they can't locate them. Brian, um, like none, none of what you're saying sounds good. None of it. You know, and, and so what, what the Warner brothers response thus far has kind of been the, the, the things that have come out, he's not confirmed, but the things that have come out are all future. So remember before it was all future projects with Ezra Miller were on hold. What's come out now is that all future projects with Ezra Miller have been canceled. That included apparently a, an HBO max flash series that included apparently, you know, I guess his role in fantastic beasts. Uh, it included like any other Flash appearances that were slated in the DC universe. But that leaves Flashpoint, which is finished, which apparently people like based upon the early screenings. And there's the, and they basically have been like, it's too expensive. He's in too much of the movie to recast and reshoot uh, the way all the money in the world did with uh, Kevin Spacey to Christopher Plummer couple of years ago um but i think in this climate as these stories come in we don't know how you can release this to the world if like if he if he is regardless of whether he's been proven guilty or not if he's facing like if he's been arrested or he's being charged with transgressions with minors i mean i guess people could push back and say like look we gave roman polanski an oscar and he couldn't set foot in the country right like so maybe but you know i think in today's climate like the, the you risk a lot of pr damage across your your broader franchise if you are out there pumping a movie where the star is facing the kind of bad news and legal trouble that this individual seems to be headed for. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what you do, but theatrical release in 4,000 screens with a marketing budget that's like $75 million? Yo. Ray Fisher got his name thrown in the mud and, and his scenes got cut because someone didn't like him. And Ray Fisher decided to speak up for himself and for others. And his name was thrown in the mud. He was not going to star in the next, uh, in the Flashpoint, because he was supposed to star in it. He was supposed to be in there, right? That would have been pretty ironic if they had gone with the original idea and it was the two of them. as the Right? One and, one and all he did was try, all he was trying to do is defend himself and others. And, and, and this guy, he's like, something's wrong there, man. It's like, something's wrong there. They don't, you don't say nothing. Nothing's being said. Only we, all we hear is bad news. Well, the statement, the only statement that came out on that point was there's a quote in the Variety article saying the studio attempted to get Miller help and he refused. No details. So, I don't, but I mean, like, anyway. But you, but let's think about it, right? So the movie's budgeted like $150 million. Like I said, you'd have to, most times you'd spend half that on marketing. So if you really are going to put this out as a tentpole summer picture, you're in for 225 to 250. So that means this movie's got to make $500 million minimum for you to break even. With the baggage that this thing is going to go with, and you can't, you absolutely cannot have him promote it or have them promote it. <laughs> at all. At all. Because first of all, the idea that you're going to get through a promotion without him getting asked about this is ludicrous. And mm -hmm. second of all, if even one tenth of the stuff that he's, the police have been called for on him in the past two years is true, he's liable to like attack a fan, do something crazy during the promo tour because he's done it in public forums multiple times when he wasn't promoting the movie. What are we waiting for? You can't do that. Like you can't do that. What are we waiting for? I don't know. I think it. I think you. I think you take a full write down on this and just go back to square one. I think you're better off in the long run eating 150 million dollars, 200 million dollars now, versus you put this movie out and then you take all the press that comes at you and says, "Look at Warner Brothers, David Zaslav, the new CEO. He backed them. He backed." A movie that featured this person with these like you don't want that. You don't. Uh, want that. Yeah. I'm asking the nerd gens out there. What What do we do? What are we waiting for? What do you think should happen with uh, that situation with Flashpoint? Does uh. Does one do, do, do Warner Brothers just take the L on this? I think they take that. They should yeah. definitely take the L on this. Because originally I said HBO Max, and now I'm kind of like, I don't know that you can put this movie anywhere. Not now. Maybe down, you know, in the posterity down the road, you can kind of say like, hey, but no, not now. Yeah, yeah. Too many questions. Um, anything else, Bron? Before we wrap up. No, I mean that's a lot of that's a lot of Comic Con content, and obviously on the on the DC side. But uh, yeah, no, I wish it wasn't. Wish it wasn't. <laughs> wish it wasn't that news. Because like I said, the weird thing is the Flashpoint early screening. People said they're really good. People said like people like this movie, which I wow. thought was shocking. But like apparently the early plays, did, that Muschietti did something good here. So wow. that's the sad part about it, right? Is that like we don't get to see, that. or we may not. So perhaps th there lies the conflict, Brian. Because I thought this movie was going to be whack, and you're saying that people who have screened the movie say this is pretty good. If it's pretty good, obviously other people will want to see it. But you got a guy doing crazy stuff out there, and who knows what else is he going to do? I, I don't. It's like you, you, again, you either take the L, but if you think you got something good. Bite the bullet, recast, do whatever needs to be done to save the movie, but replace Ezra Miller. 
Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about the whole Kevin situation. He's seen the light after the retreat or his, or, or the entire parliament has seen the light perhaps. And we're gonna see the result. Uh, that's gonna be very interesting conversation when we see that, Brian. Um, and let us know what you guys think about uh, DC not having a big presence at, at a, I think a very historic Comic Con. I think perhaps one of the best Comic Cons we'll ever experience because again, we've been gone for two years and Marvel wasn't, uh, the MCU weren't having that much of a presence th uh, there. So, uh, and they're coming back. Uh, I, I, and I most definitely to make noise. So, uh, yeah, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.